All right, welcome back, ladies and germs. Today is a very special day. We are putting the lime in the coconut, finally. Um, by that, I mean the lime is the uh, coal pits oscillator and amplifier we built a few days ago. And the coconut is the program that I wrote for this uh, signal counter, the MHS 5200A. So without further ado, let's uh, take a look at some of the electronics we got here, and then we will go over to the program. So if you missed it, um, in the last video, I made an amplifier for the Colpitz oscillator so that it would trigger um, past the threshold that this uh, counter inside of this that the counter inside of this device uh, uh, triggers at. So I have 12 volts going into this amplifier from our trusty on-the-go power supply. This is a three-cell uh, lithium polymer battery, and uh, so it's going directly into here. It's also going into this buck converter. And the buck converter is feeding the uh, about six and a half volts to the Colpitz oscillator, uh, which is all it really needs. So uh, Colpitz oscillator and the amplifier into the frequency generator this, uh, should be putting about just over two volts peak to peak signal into the uh, frequency counter here. And uh, so yeah, let's plug her in and see what we got. And it might be hard to see here on the screen, but. 7.9628, so that's 7.962 megahertz. Um, and yeah, so uh, the goal of this project was to be able to monitor the frequency of this oscillator um, in time. And so we can't really do that, obviously, by just staring at the screen. So that is what the next portion of this video is about, is a program that I made to monitor this frequency of this. Let's head on over to the Electric Sheep Labs GitHub repository, or GitHub account, where I've got my first program here, MHS 5200A Data Logger. And uh, you can check this out. Uh, there's a <laughs> big disclaimer here. Um, I am not a programmer. <laughs> I am a physics major at Ohio State University, and um, my code is pretty hellish. Um, yeah, so for those of you who actually program, please don't uh, don't be too hostile. Um, try to you know submit positive, uh, constructive feedback um, because I am not a professional by any stretch of the imagination. Anyway, uh, with that cleared, um, if you want to try this program, if you've got this device, um, all you need to do is download the zip uh, folder. And so I've done that here. Uh, you download it and extract it. I've done it on my desktop here. So we'll go in, go into this guy. And you'll see you just have a uh, PDF, which is basically the MHS 5200A manual. Um, there's a C program that works in tandem with two shell scripts um, to do the plotting. So, and I, of course, always read the readme. It's, uh, it's definitely important. <laughs> so anyway, um, I know what the readme wants me to do, so I'm going to go ahead and just do all that stuff right now. Let's give this a shot, shall we? So run it as super user. And let's just try data test. So uh, you enter the name for the file extension, and you also need to enter a uh, window size. So in seconds, it's like the amount, the last n seconds of data will be displayed on the screen. And you'll see that in a second. So we'll do two minutes, 120 seconds. OK, so as that data file fills up, you'll see the, uh, the x range will fill to uh, all the way up to 120 and it'll start panning but yeah here it is guys so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, well so right now you're seeing 7.9628 um, so this is right about where our frequency is on our Colpitz oscillator there's a little bit of fluctuation we're fluctuating geez not even uh, I think we're fluctuating in a couple Hertz these are like single Hertz fluctuations right here as you can see by the, the Y axis. And now you can see the screen is panning. So we're getting the, the fresh data, the fresh 
past 120 seconds of uh, frequency data. So this is written, again, this is written in Bash, uh, shell scripting, and uh, also a, a C program to do the USB communication with the device. So there's definitely, uh, I, think, I think Python could have been easier to do this whole thing in, you know, a, a Python library. This uses a, um, th so this is plotting in GNU plot. The C program is running in the background to fill, to populate the data file that this GNU plot uh, script is also reading. So, um, yeah, probably would have been a lot easier in Python, a lot more streamlined, um, probably would look nicer, but it was fun. Got to learn a little bit about bash scripting and, um, yeah, <laughs> the documentation is not the best. So tread with caution, but bash scripting is pretty cool. It's a pretty, uh, powerful thing. You basically own your computer now, you know? You can customize it. Send. You can write all sorts of scripts to do different things. Uh, you know, it's really it's really kind of how you own your computer. It's pretty awesome. So anyway, I think we'll go ahead and try. The main uh, final act for this video is going to be to try the Sharpie test again. If you remember in the uh, Colpitz oscillator video, if you haven't seen that, there's a link up here for the Colpitz oscillator. And uh, there'll probably be a link uh, for the amplifier that we made. Um, but I put a line of Sharpie marker on the quartz crystal, and the addition of mass causes the crystal, due to the Sauerbrie equation, which is what dictates the oscillation frequency of the crystal, of a quartz crystal, um, the frequency will change uh, with a change in mass. It actually goes like 1 over square root of m. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try and see if uh, we can watch the frequency change when I draw a Sharpie line on the crystal. So here it goes. Okay, sorry about that. I think I put way too big of a Sharpie mark blob on the crystal resonator. And the weird thing is, is I think, for whatever reason, I lost amplitude big time. And that's why you saw on the screen, it went down to zero and never really recovered. It was like hovering around one or two uh, megahertz. And that was probably because the, the signal wasn't strong enough so that every, uh, you know, every cycle was passing the threshold. Um, and so what I did, all I did was use a little screwdriver and on the bottom of this guy, there's a little pot down here, a potentiometer that you can uh, turn to change the output voltage of the buck converter. And so I just uh, increased the input on the oscillator a little bit to give it a little, a little extra push so it could get over that threshold. Um, and I, of course, used the scope to look at the uh, voltage peak to peak. And um, see so yeah, how it's back up around one and a half, two volts. Um, and triggering just fine on the uh, counter. So we're back over on the screen here. Cooperate. Second try. And we'll go with 200 seconds in the window. So I'll give it a minute to uh, settle down. Okay, so it's still creeping up, <clears throat> but I want to go ahead and try this. It won't matter too much that it hasn't settled out yet, I don't think. So, here goes a small Sharpie mark. So this window now isn't going to do much for us. Um, as you can see, there's a big drop when the oscillation quits, and then we, of course, return to something not quite where we were, but um, you know, maybe maybe 10, 10 kilohertz max difference, as you saw in the last one. It was about 10 kilohertz, but I put a ton on. I just put a little bit on, so I'm expecting maybe two or three kilohertz uh, as delta F. So 
I will give this uh, I'll give this a few minutes to settle out, and we'll come back, remove this artifact from the data, and we'll see what we got. And as you can see, it's rewindowed to exclude that big blip. <clears throat> well, I guess that from the time it's uh, more than 200 seconds have elapsed since I made the Sharpie line, so that data has disappeared. And so it's rewindowed um, into a nicer, nicer area here. So I will go ahead and, for the sake of time, you know, I guess we'll let this run for a little bit more. See if we can get it to uh, settle out. All right, so we'll go ahead and exit out uh, by pressing Control C. We will change directory to data. So we're going to go ahead and open up this uh, data file now. It was called uh, second try. So we'll open it up and I want to get rid of that. Uh, when it drops down to zero, I want to get rid of that junk. You can see it right here. It's got zero, zero, zero. Um, so we'll get rid of that and that'll allow us to plot just the parts of the data we want to see. Um, basically when it's oscillating in the beginning and then when it starts coming back up to an equilibrium. Um, so we got to save that as something else. I don't know why, I, got, I still have to figure out why these are locked text files, but anyway, so there's a file. So we will run GNU plot and uh, type plot second try out dot text. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, so there she is. Um, there's still a really big drop, so maybe we'll go ahead and remove should probably remove more of that, but as you can see, it starts at an initial value and then um, drops down and slowly creeps back up to some eventually constant value. Um, so, and you can see it's uh, about a, what three kilohertz, maybe three kilohertz delta F. But let's go ahead and try to get rid of this other. Let's get rid of this other. Uh, yeah, there it is. A couple artifacts in there. Um, so we'll knock those guys out. And try this one more time. And there it is down here. All right, sweet. Beautiful. So, again, what about a three kilohertz change? You see that's the, the slow rise. Um, as the volatiles evaporate off, the frequency increases um, up. And eventually it would it would return flat. I didn't, uh, I didn't wait long enough to, for that to happen, but yeah, guys, there it is. Pretty, uh, pretty excited about this. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, again, check it out on uh, Electric Sheep Labs at, at GitHub. And uh, it's, this program's under the MHS 5200A data logger um, repository. And uh, yeah, much more to come with this. Hopefully, we'll be able to actually use it in a vacuum system in the future um, to monitor film thickness. So. Uh, I guess we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for checking it out.